I've been busy working all night And I'm telling everybody I'ma get it right They know what I'm living like I've been busy going all out And I'm telling But first, before we get into Good morning, everybody. Oh, man, today's a special day. We got the 50K Poker Players Championship uh, event I probably get more excited about than any other one. It's the most fun for a professional poker player. And when I call up, and when I say professional, I mean somebody who plays all the poker games, not just somebody who plays No Limit Hold'em and PLO, but all the games. But before we get to that, I need to have what's called a clear off, okay? So essentially a clear off is something that I, I, mo I mainly did it in my journal last night, but I figured I'd share it with you. After I got home, I'd realized like I was writing in my journal a few different you know, hands that I played and uh, sort of my thought process throughout them. And one common theme I noticed with like the three marginal mistakes that I made were I was playing not to lose rather than more aggressively to win in the big bet mix. I waited too long to make the adjustment. Um, so early in a tournament, you know, you have a lot of really weak, bad players and they play pretty straight, straightforward and, uh, you know, you don't need to be aggressive. You just need to wait for them to do dumb stuff and you'll, you know, you'll get the chips. Now, later in events is when everyone's like, you know, playing more aggressive, they're playing better. So it for, you know, you need to take more risks. You don't have the opportunity to just kind of like wait for them to blow off their chips. And I, I did, I waited too long. There's one example I'll give you. I'll give you a couple. Ryan Hughes, four-handed, no limit hold'em raised four-handed and I was the button with ace jack had about 80,000 in chips he made it 6,000 and I just flatted with the ace jack and that's a hand that uh, I mean I felt like I had a little bit of an awkward stack to the three bet because I for three bet I always have to call but uh, I decided to flat and that's just a mistake especially against him because he's very very aggressive and then it came four four three and you know he bet small in the flop 8500 and i'm like oh man jeez i can't really represent much now i've put myself in a really bad spot by flatting and uh this is just a very good chance i have the best hand here but do i have the coyones to go with it but i called the, the flop bet the turn was a seven he bet again and then i just folded the ace jack and it's like it just feels like man this guy could have he could have had like literally any hand there's a, I, I did pick up somewhat of a read that he was quite kind of strong but that's irrelevant the point is i should have we raised that one. Then another one, induced the seven single draw. Ashton Griffin raised the butt to 8,000, and I had about 50 total, and that was in the big line, induced the seven with four, six, six, seven, eight. Not a great hand, but it's a one card draw to an eight with a straight draw, and Ashton's raising on the butt, and he's gonna raise with a lot of bad hands, um, putting the pressure on, and um, I elected to call and drew one. <laughs> And he drew two behind me. So if I would have just moved in there like I'm supposed to, I pick up the pot and we move on. Instead, he draws two. Now I make a pair of sevens, so now I bluff at it for 10,000. He calls. Now the bluff that I made with the deuce three, four, seven, I like that play. Frankly, I could have, most people said, like with deuce three, four, seven, with, three, with dealt, you can easily re-raise that hand and go with it, you know, and draw three times. Uh, I didn't, and I saved chips on that one. So sometimes it benefits you to like not go cuckoo. But the other hand, the very key hand, the chip leader right now is, is Jens something Meyer. He's a chip leader because of, partly because of a hand that he bluffed me on. And I, I should have took, I took a long time, but I didn't take long enough. It was a hand where I, uh, I had deuce five, seven, deuce to seven, triple draw. I called his raise and then I caught a six. Then I called another bet of his when he was drawing. And then I made an eight going into the last draw. I checked and he bet the pot and I called. And then I just padded in front of him. He drew one, right? So now I checked and he, he bet it all. He bet all in. Um, but either he did something I should have just picked up on and I missed it. And I was like, oh, you know what? I have a lot of chips. I don't need to gamble here. I was thinking too much not to lose. So a little tip for you in general, or for me anyway, that I'm gonna share with you is, uh, you know, playing not to lose is, is, is not the way to go, especially when you're down at two tables. So. I reminded myself several times for this 50K Poker Players Championship, my favorite event, brings out all the superstars. The structure is so incredibly slow. Like, we start with hundred, hundreds of big of big bets in, in, in limits. So the thing about this one, the 50K, last thing I'll add before we I'll leave you with this, is uh, you have two types of players in these events, right? You have players who are limit players who are like deathly afraid to put any chips in in PLO or no limit hold'em. And then you have the guys who are fearless in those games and maybe they don't play the limit games as well. Um, what you want to be is you want to be a combination of both. A really good limit player and somebody who says, you know what, if there's a PLO hand and I have to go broke with it, I'll go broke with it. If you look at the people, the, the types of players that have won this 50K, you have big bet players. 
you know, Mike the Grinder, Mizraki played super aggressive in those level in those periods. You got Brian Rast, you know, very similar. Both of them have won it twice. So I'm going to look to just look play for value, play properly, play aggressively if need be, and not as much tournament strategy in terms of like, oh, survival. I'm gonna try to look for value, not on day one. Day one is just playing poker. But I'm talking about in the late stages when it matters most. So anyways, super proud of the fact that I am the, whatever you wanna call it, the 25K MVP so far. I've got the most points of anybody in the, in the draft because what we do is we weight very heavily wins, final tables, second tables, and min caches mean what they're supposed to mean. Fuck all, basically, right? Min caches are min caches. They're not supposed to get you a lot of points in a system. In our system, you get one point for a min cache. If you win a $1,500 event, you'll get like 60 points. That's about the right ratio. None of this three min caches is the same as a uh, as a win. That's just foolish, stupid, and silly. And this will be the last year that happens, I'm hopeful for. All right, so it's about two o'clock. I got, I'm taking a few pieces of a couple people, so I gotta meet with them, you know, and uh, make some money transfers, do some business, and uh, then it's off to play, 3 p.m. I'll be there right on time. Fifteen minutes away. Very, very excited. Trying to keep it tranquilo for a little bit. Um, my intention. I actually, in my journal last night, I kind of wrote up my intention for each day. My intention is to win this tournament. Uh, my intention for today is to move from two hundred fifty thousand to four hundred thousand in chips. Uh, we start very, very deep. So you know, winning one hundred fifty k at those limits would be pretty darn good. And I'll let you know each day. But I've already got it planned out. It's going to be. Well, I'll tell you now. Four hundred k to end day one. Million to end day two. 2.4 million in day three, 6 million going into the last day, and then all the chips, however many they are, we'll have them all, take the darn picture, shave the beard, the whole deal. Guy. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> That's what his shirt says. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he is. I'm just reading his shirt. <laughs> He's just reading his shirt. Come <laughs> there. You playing this Thanks thing? For the group. Yeah. Only if I can get a fifty thousand dollar bet. I'm sure you can walk around here. <laughs> you think anybody give me action? I, one of the, he said one of the funniest things ever. He walked by here. I go, yeah, what's up, Raymond Davis? He goes, shh, keep it down. I owe a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Last time. Good luck, buddy. Thanks. First level for me, and the swing was all down. Uh, I started with 250k in chips, was down to 190,000, which is a lot in, in this format. And then I played a big pot in PLO. Like I said, I'm coming in here, playing every game, making the decisions that are supposed to be made. So uh, this is a big one. Let's do a hand breakdown. I raised the button with Jack Jack 3 4, okay, to 1200. Uh, Ray Decardani re raises to 3600. Brock Parker calls in the big blind, PLO. The blinds were two and 400. I call, comes 10-6 deuce, Ray bets 6,000. Brock calls, I over call. Turn is a queen of clubs, bringing back door clubs. I don't have any clubs. Check to me, I check. River's the nine, 
so I have nothing. Uh, Ray checks. Brock bet 16.5. And I just, I have the blockers. Blockers, blockers. See, this is where blockers actually relevant. Two jack blockers. And uh, I decide, you know, he's got 7.8 a lot here. But it's unlikely he has, we could have some jack 8, which makes a straight as well. But king jack, very, very unlikely for him to peel on a 10.6 deuce flop. So I raised pot with the jack blockers. And he, uh, Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Cheers. Cheers. It's blocker, blocker talk. Um, and then, so, I raised him pot. He thought for a second and then folded. And he showed me Jack Jack. I don't know what he had, but he had the Jack blockers and had the same idea I did. But uh, had the coyones to steal that one. So we have 230,100 in chips after level one. Yeah. Ha. Uh, now let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, now bring the hats in. Uh, yeah. Now where my crash is at? Love that. Yeah, now bring the hook back. No matter where the day throws at you, keep doing what you do and never looking back. Hold your head high, keep it real strong. And if you feel the beat, sing my life's yeah. good. Sing my life's good. Life's good. Life's good. Uh, sing my life's good. No matter where the day throws at you Keep doing what you're doing, never looking back Hold your head high, keep it real strong And if you feel the beat, sing life's good Sing life's good, life's good, life's good Sing life's good, life's good. Life's good. Sing life's good. <laughs> ideal for fantasy perspectives, which is very important to us, and this is the most important fantasy event as it turns out. Um, we've got myself, Brock Parker, and Ray D at one table, and then we have Mark Gregorich, David Benjamin, and Chris George at the other table. So six of my eight guys at the same tables. Hopefully there's not too much war. Level 2, 275, 500. I'll update e each level. I'm, it's fun for me. This is like my championship event. So each level, we'll update the stack. Moving on in the right direction. Ray D got moved. Brock's still at my table, but the other table that had three of my guys at it, uh, they all dispersed because you know, adding tables. A huge turnout. 71 players already after level 2. This could break last year's record. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of the tournament. So people, people are interested in this. I, I didn't give you permission. Whatever. Win something. Win something. Win something. You won't video me if I win something. <laughs> Ming Lee in the house. Hello. Huh? Hello. Hey, movie star. Hello. Movie star. Hello, hey, sir. Eugene in the house. You must say hi to the people. Want to say hi to people? Hi. I'm Ming Lee. Hey, it's Ming Lee. Movie star, huh? Lucky you. Movie star. That's okay. <laughs> All the superstars in the house today. Yes, That's the Jungle Man. How you doing, man? You're looking svelte. All right. Huh? Looking svelte. Svelte, lean, shredded, muscular. Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> $300 
115,500. Once again, the very last hand of the break, I played a big one. Uh, went at the break for about four minutes. Raised with, in stud, I raised with split kings and an eight. Um, Keith Gibson re-raised me with the six of spades. Mike Matiso calls the eight, with an eight of clubs. He calls a re-raise. So I'm like, that's a three card club hand, especially because I have an eight in the hole. Make a long story short, my catch is a 10 and an eight, open eights. And I have a three and a deuce with my king, king, eight. eight. Uh, and behind me is Keith Gibson, who's got king, six of spades showing, and a three of clubs. Mike bet the open eights. I know that's all he's got, so I raised him. And then I bet six street uh, with when I made two pair and won a nice pot. So 315.5, very happy. Mark Gregrich also, everyone's laughing about it. He busted Daniel Cates in No Limit Hold'em with aces against ace king suited. Now remember when I told you there's some guys in the tournament that are like not gonna do crazy stuff in the No Limit? Mark's one of them. But clearly GTO Daniel Cates didn't get the memo not to call, not to five bet Mike, Mark, Mike, Mark Gregrich in No Limit Hold'em without uh, chopping aces. <laughs> What a frickin' level of stud eight or better. Holy smoly cojoles. <laughs> yep, I got 2075 and level five. One more level to go. Uh, played a stud eight hand. First one was brutal. A nine limp, Stan Shack. Um, Mike Mattis raised with the king of spade. Justin Bonomo calls with the queen of clubs. I have the eight of hearts up, the low card and no low cards out, with two six of hearts in the hole. So I have three flush, three low. I have a choice to either try to keep Dan in, play it four ways, or get more value for my hand. So I re-raise, get Dan out. Three, three of us see four street. Make a long story short, on six street, I have the low, I have a flush draw, Mikey in the middle. Uh, Justin Bonomo, who started the queen of clubs, cut a couple clubs. And he, he ended up, anyway, make a long story short, I make a damn flush and a low. He makes a better flush starting with the queen of clubs and a better low. <laughs> so that was one hand. Then the, the, the hand that really was dirty against Justin Bonomo on 6th Street. I started with uh, do 6, 7 of spades. I got the 3 of spades again in stud 8. It's a pretty strong hand. Then I make 7s on 5. And I, whatever, I catch nothing, a king on 6. His hand on 6th Street was a pair of 6s and a king and a queen with a five and a like, so basically he had sixes, I had sevens with a flush draw, with a low draw. So in order for me to lose that pot, I have to miss everything and uh, he has to improve. And that's what happened. He made queens up. I caught a big old fat 10. So not exactly an ideal level. Good news is lots of play, lots of time to uh, make some things happen.
What'd you say? Of course. See you later, bud. Very happy with the finish. Won a very good pot in the last time in Limit Hold'em. Whoo, baby. Got so many hands I want to discuss, but uh, I ended up with 360,100. The very last hand of the night, Evo Donev in Limit Hold'em raises uh, to 5,000. I'm in the small blind with ace-10 of diamonds. I make it 7,500. And the big blind, this is, I didn't make this up. This is, Nick, this is what people call him. Uh, little shit, that's his name. He calls in the big blind. Uh, the flop is a six three two clubs. Um, I decide to check. Uh, little shit bets twenty five hundred. Evo raises to five thousand, and I thought maybe if I three bet here, I can represent a bigger hand than I have, and maybe get um, little shit to fold ace jack or ace queen. He calls. Evo Donev folds the ace jack, so I get it. You know, I, I get him out, and then little shit has king queen of clubs. <laughs> So he missed the clubs and I won a nice little pot at the end. So very happy. I had so much fun today. Um, a lot of poker talk, I know, which some of you may like, some of you may not. But during the 50K, it's all about the poker. It's all about the grind. I try to focus really hard, hyper focus, like next level kind of focus. So really happy to bag and tag today. I think we only lost about five players. The numbers are huge. We're already ahead of last year's pace. We've got 93 entrants and you can late reg this one on day two. So expect to see, I don't know, I think we'll get over hundred maybe, maybe seven or eight guys come and play tomorrow. But uh, that's another day, man. Another day in the life. Really feel great. Uh, a little bit of adversity throughout the day, but in the end, we done good. <laughs>